Nobody do the Johar voice. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. Shift the Mercedes that you had. Put the gun in Hey, welcome back to the Jeff Boy. What's up, what's up? Episode 278. I got the homie Turks right behind me. I got Chef right next to me. <laughs> Yo. And I got number one in the building. <laughs> what's that? No, stop. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. What's that? What's up? Shout out to tens and tens of listeners. Not tens and tens of viewers. Thank you for being here. We are recording on a Thursday. So mm-hmm. if something happens within the next couple of days and we don't cover it, don't get mad at us. We are not time travelers. Because we don't have any topics and we have nothing and we all cannot connect together on the same day to record. So we decided to record early because we like each other. Each other. The people. Yeah. Not us. yeah. No, no, everyone like knows we hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. Why, are we, why are we starting off with lies? <laughs> I was confused here a second. I was like, we, we miss each other. <laughs> you know? This is like me, like you, when you give it, like, you know, you say a word and you point to me, <laughs> like, thinking yeah, I know yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Maybe this is what's going on. I don't know. Did y'all hear the story of uh, Freddie Gibbs talking about when Michael Jackson went to Gary, Indiana? Mm. What? Mm. Isn't no, he no. from Gary, Indiana? <laughs> uh, I'm going to play this for you. It's, it's kind of like two minutes long, so I apologize for everybody that's forced to be here. Content. <laughs> yes. Again, as I said, we have no topics. Yeah. <laughs> so starting off strong. Real strong. A nigga Mike one time in my life in person. Didn't believe Michael Jackson was coming to Gary, but he came. You would have thought Jesus came back. And that was like a real uh, symbol of, of hope just for that nigga coming back. Because he hadn't been back there for a while. It, Gary ain't got enough money for Mike to do to, to sing a note on the mic. Nigga went to uh, speak at this baseball stadium and shit, this big stupid ass baseball stadium we got in Gary. I don't know why the fuck we got that shit because niggas don't watch baseball anyway. <laughs> this nigga Mike walk around Gary in his pajamas with like a Captain Crunch suit on. His shit was <laughs> laid, his perm was laid out, he was good. And you know shit, that nigga had to come get him something to eat and shit, man. That nigga motherfucker Mike came through and went to KFC, dog. And Mike bought all the motherfucking hundred barbecue wings, man, all the goddamn original. He went through the drive-through, nigga. All you saw the nigga was in the limo. You saw the goddamn shiny gloves sticking out the uh, sunroof. He was waving that nigga and shit. It took like a motherfucking hour to get his order out. And I swear this nigga was ordering extra crispy, motherfucking uh, original, all that shit. Man, niggas was honking the horn behind him and shit. They like, damn, Mike, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Come after Mike, ain't he? That nigga ran out of chicken. But that nigga bought all the chicken for the people, my nigga. When he pulled up to the baseball stadium, he started throwing the chicken out the car and shit. <laughs> the niggas was like, what the fuck? Am I passing out chicken? Like, <laughs> all you see is the motherfucking <laughs> goddamn shiny glove throwing chicken out the window. Niggas running to the window like, Mike, they try to get... Uh, oh, wow. Uh, what a story. Uh, that is crazy that is amazing yo i mean he's he's, he's for the people isn't he <laughs> just imagine uh, that glove <laughs> just like <laughs> greasy glove. Like, greasy like, like imagine it's like you pulled up oh michael jackson's right here you're like excuse me mike mike is like a like a, a drum snagging <laughs> your forehead he ain't getting mike it's just mike you, you, you get fed <laughs> That's what you're getting. Yeah, it's like Muhammad, it was like Muhammad Abdul pulling up to a Kepsa place and just throwing rice at people. Well, like, <laughs> it's not going to make sense. That yeah, would be confusing. <laughs> I do agree. Uh, uh, shout out to Freddie Gibbs. Well, shout out to it's all Do you guys day. believe that uh, Mike uh, I'd call him Mike because if I knew <laughs> exactly <laughs> one of the boys, the homie. <laughs> okay. Abu, ja- Abu, Jackson. Abu Jackson, Jackson, Mike J. <laughs> uh, do you guys believe the whole voice thing? What voice that thing? came out? I don't know if you oh, guys... Oh, the uh, one that he had a deep voice? Yeah, he, he has a deep voice, but I he's truly just believe uh, that, yeah, putting out that believe act. That. Do you oh. know why I believe that? Because <laughs> he's a singer of, of the top notch. Do you ever see... Yes, that's exactly why. Do you mm. ever see the making of uh, the song Thriller? Mm, the making? No, I haven't. So there's a clip that was surfacing online for a while. I think you can find it somewhere on YouTube, right? Where... I, I, I think it was a Quincy Jones. I don't know who it was. But it anyway, was, yeah. he asked them to sing every note. So like thriller and yeah. like you had to go through every single note and you're like okay next one and Michael did it with his own voice yeah, no he machines did, nothing he sang the whole like uh, choir part exactly by so himself yeah. him having that capacity to do that I believe that wasn't his voice and he chose to put it on as yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah as yeah. an act I think it, he slipped a couple of times. Uh, on stage okay uh, yo uh, well, yeah exactly yeah, the, <laughs> yo what's wrong uh, oh sorry guys <laughs> no you know it, there's I a couple could... of clips that I saw yeah 
and I'd, really i think it helped make him softer around the edges i guess more acceptable people to people more likable most likely that yeah. more likable more you know? approachable more approachable i'm a soft human yes exactly with feelings and that's love a very weird journey theme. that's a ridiculous journey Psalah. and I, I love the story he had about the the beatles like when he bought the beatles oh yeah, he what he, so <laughs> so, he, okay, so first off this is not the 1800s okay wait, wait, no, 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 okay. <laughs> he didn't buy the no, no, beatles well first off the beatles will never been bought no, 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 okay history, but, but yeah. that shows you just like first of all how nice he is as a person and how terrifying the powerful he could be right so he walks up to paul mccartney i think and he's like yo how much would it cost to buy the beatle he's like what do you mean he's like what i what if i wanted to buy the, the masters the masters not you know, beatles, the, the, the masters. publishing yeah. rights <laughs> for the beatles, right? buy the beatles. <laughs> and he's like i don't know maybe like 64 million he's like oh okay and then he goes to sleep and the next day he wakes up paul mccartney wakes up and he's like hey, well we're being bought out by michael jackson and he's like and he goes into michael and he's like why are you doing this he's like well i gave you 64 so you guys are getting some extra money on, on the side. Well, I think that wasn't the story. I think there was something else to that story. But you are right. He did buy the Masters and Paul got really pissed off. Yeah. And he did it to piss off Interesting. Paul. But that's it. He didn't want to use it to sample it whatsoever. It did just you hear him use anything? Just vibes? No, I'm just I getting... Think, did I'm he just, do that to Sony also about half of Sony? I don't know about yeah. the Sony part. I wouldn't be surprised again. But let me just make money off, this, off, it, off you forever. Isn't this basically like taking this is, out the competition more or less? No, it's just you. I don't think so. It's completely different realms. I mean, they're both. I mean, wasn't again? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it like a thing that the Beatles weren't streaming anywhere for a long, long time? Yeah, wasn't yes, that true. related to that? No, this happened way before that. I think this. Yeah, happened. because the t- the ties, the the rights were with the Jackson Estate or something. Mm-hmm. And Paul McCartney bought them back or something. He bought it for forty-seven point five million. Forty-seven point five million. Yes. Okay. Maybe it was in pounds. Half Yeah. That is ridiculous. Well, but yeah, the, the dude was long, wealthy. Yeah, it's a, it's a long story. I remember so, yeah, watching I mean, a clip of him just walking through a, a, an antique store. Everything is just in the millions. And he's going, I, I want this one and that one and that one. As if he's like, Bakala. I don't need to calculate this. Shit, no, nothing. You know? I, hey. I can. Ma- Paul McCartney was trying to buy it back. That happened after. I think this is like an 85. Mm. In 1985, however, those songs went back, went back up for sale and McCartney was set to purchase them. Uh, yeah, because Lennon owned it okay. in 1980. But Jackson snuck in and wielded his financial power and got it. Uh, McCartney, who was also bidding on the music, felt betrayed and angered. He no longer owned his own songs and had previously started buying other music, like tracks written by Buddy Holly. The two had forged a friendship in the 1970s, but it doesn't matter the rest of the story. Mm. But yeah, so yeah. there was a bidding war. He was like, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, exactly. That's a baller move. Like, yo, fuck your But it was, it was a money power move. Mm. It was a, exactly. Yeah, it was a money power you move. You know, like, I can actually do this. And you know what? You can't do anything about it. I'm going to make a controversial statement. Mm. The Beatles, mid. Oh, mid as hell. I mean, I would agree with that. Oh, no, mid, d- mid, during yeah. that time, they were amazing. We're and they still are. We're talking about today. Uh, yeah, yeah I, and honestly, a lot. I of, still like the Beatles. I love the Beatles. Yes, it's okay. it's okay. They're not yeah. bad. You can love they're nothing. They're bad. They're mid. They're mid. And there's a lot of music from the '60s that has more replay value for me than Beatles. From the '60s, like Ray like, Charles. You know, they, they I, I were, go back and forth. I love this. Yeah, like, like, listen to more they, Elvis. They, than I no, 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 Beatles. no, no. The Beatles are better. No, that's a stretch for me. I listen more Beatles than Elvis. Yeah, Elvis. Elvis has like four songs. He's got bangers, bro. He only had like four. He was the king. He was the king of rock and roll for reasons. Elvis was like because America's made him king of rock. Yeah, because he's told most of those songs because he can sway those. You know. What the hips? Little hips. The hips. Little exactly. Hips. That was a part of it. That well, was you, a... well, you're a simple man that likes simplicity. So no, no, no. Since no. when do you do an Elvis impression? Hold was... up. Well, what's happening? Where did this come from? <laughs> Again, as was this something you're working on for a while? Me? No. No. Oh, this he's is like him. No, you with yeah. the Elvis impression. Oh, I grew up there, bro. I remember that shit since we were kids and forcing him down our throat and shit. Pause. This man Pause. Is, is, <laughs> no, no. This man no. was steeped in culture, Turks. Mm. You need to understand that. It's not the culture that I like, but it's not good. <laughs> So yeah, he 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 got some bangers also. Yeah, but back to the conversation, like the they had some weird, uh, how can I say this? Weird experimental the, stuff in the seventies. Yeah, the trippy was, phase. Yeah, I don't in, listen to that. Yeah. It was interesting, but there was a walrus at some point. No, there yeah. was this person called Yoko Ono. You might have heard of her. Yeah. Uh, See, I'm not really familiar with the history of the Beatles. I hear these names, but I'm not really sure like what they actually uh, all did. I, you know the the there's a reason the term Yoko Ono is is used yeah. in popular culture as 
a person who is ruining a band or something. Yeah, when you get yokoed, خلاص. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yokoed is that the term? Yeah, that is the term. Yeah. Yeah. The term. Yeah. What does it mean to get yokoed? The gist <laughs> just, of it is uh, Yoko Ono started, or uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono started dating, and uh, she just wanted destroyed. to. Yeah, the, she destroyed everything. She, yeah, everything. she destroyed. Yeah, everything. she would walk in during their recordings and just start screaming in the mics because she thinks that this is music. Mm. And uh, all the other band members were uh, frustrated I'm about it. I'm guessing she's not a musician. And uh, Lennon sided with her rather than the band, and, and they just broke exactly. up. Halas. This is why I don't allow girls to come in here between us. Mm. It's not because like no one really likes us. Because we yeah. scream in the mics. It's because no, it's because yeah, I'm afraid that we lose <laughs> the bond between us is very yeah. very weak. <laughs> I, I have to keep the band together, guys. Yeah, I mean honestly, I, I, we do, we do. With with all due respect, like any girl who would be the fifth capsiteer cap is probably a very unwell. <laughs> Any yeah. of the capsiteers are unwell. Salah. Exactly. The girl would be double unwell because... Well, you're, now you you're, just ruined all the plans that I <laughs> had. <laughs> you're, you're After she hears this, she's like, yo, fuck it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Episode 278, where the truth was exposed. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're a girl. They're just you're, morons. You're a girl. You have options. We we are, we don't. What do you mean by that? Right? I mean, we Explain option, the, we option should, to be I'll, here. I'll, I'm, I'll, trying, okay. I'm trying here. Why, why yeah. are you ruining my jokes? Okay. I'm sitting here like a pumpkin spice latte right here. <laughs> okay? <laughs> trying to get this ball moving. And you stop me. Okay, man. Keep, so, sorry, sir. You keep going. So, let's recap. <laughs> <laughs> let's recap. My let's, demise. Let's, <laughs> yeah. re, let's, let's recap here. You have Shamsi, who mm-hmm. is... How can I say this? Uh, Molested. Uh, dif- difficult to... Emotionally. By life. Emotionally. Yeah. By life. <laughs> Emotionally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be yeah. specific, yeah. y'all. Yeah. <laughs> the pause was too long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, we were like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm like halfway, I'm like, yo, they might think it's his family, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta protect the family. Yeah. It was life, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. So you have Shamsi, who is difficult to tolerate. Uh, the term might be... أسر Wonderful في to be around. Asr fil Aisha. Asr fil Aisha. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, that was from the heart, though. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. that was from the heart. Because yeah. yes. we never heard this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah but, like, like, I don't know the way his face from. scrunched. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He was getting it out. Yeah. This is his way of saying none of y'all shared an office with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's what I really saw. What I saw. Yes, you you have Turks who is. Somewhere on the spectrum, probably somewhere. Uh, so far, farther Take, along than you are. Thanks one to no one. Thank yes. you. But the thing is, like he wasn't, he didn't find himself on the spectrum. He added himself yes, to the exactly. spectrum. <laughs> which is the difference here. He was exploring <laughs> life, which is, <laughs> and he happened on this wonderful I mean, morning. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You know? And he's like, hmm. how is this? <laughs> <laughs> he skipped it. He hopped his way. You know, into the spectrum. The spectrum. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Y- you ha- you have you have me and this per- poor girl would have to listen to my off podcast conversations. <laughs> uh, nobody should. I, I should that's, that's the only problem we're gonna have. If we do have uh, a f- a fifth person, on the a cap a cap if you will, right? And she happens to be a woman. We won't be able to get his stories. No, <laughs> none, I mean, none of them. None of his stories. He's gonna yeah. be, you know, he's gonna be quiet. Hi- I know, hiding behind the table. And no one knows that number one is super shy yes. mm-hmm. and gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 <laughs> just to remind yeah. you, yes. with. <laughs> Let's arrive there. He's a man with a wonderfully buff body. Okay, that's, that's all you need to know. And tall. naturally oiled. Naturally <laughs> oiled. Yes. And tall, <laughs> the right size yeah, head. Yeah. <laughs> the right size head. A very noticeable. No and, extra and very, hair at all. Yes. Yeah. Very, very noticeable and very defined ha- hairline. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So so so. I don't think you can handle that, yes. dear fifth capsiteer yes. of the future. And, and we have Adil, who is... Emotionally unavailable. <laughs> yes. Emotion, he, he, he fluctuates between emotionally unavailable and... and psychopathic. And Being deep, too available. Deep, deep, uncomfortable, unrelenting, fuck off, <laughs> anger, <laughs> anger. <laughs> Which is a wonderful temperature to be around yeah. fall, by the it way. It is the two flavors of Adil. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for that. You're very kind. <laughs> Cold disinterest or unburning wrath. I mean, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this table is still broken by this man. I mean, uh, at all, it's not laziness. No, no, it's a sign. I could have fixed this table like 900 times. No, but, but this it is just reminds me of the 
war. It's the wounds that never heal, Adel. The wounds that never heal. <laughs> this is our memorial. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this is our homework. I'm going like, to put it on display mm, at the next finale. Yeah. See, they don't know, Adel. They, they don't, don't know, know how deep it is. They don't know. No, they, they don't know. I'm like crying. We, re- <laughs> we, we remember. We remember. <laughs> all right, okay. All right, boys, let's get this podcast back on Please. track. Wait, Please. wait. So, what were we talking about? The, the poor fifth capsateer who's never going to join us. <laughs> no, before that. No, no, but way before that. Anyway. The talk about Michael Jackson's Michael voice. Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know I mean, do you, do you guys still think he's the king of pop? Have his, has Do he I not, think he's still? Yeah, has he not been surpassed? Yeah, I think he is forever going to be the king of pop. Mm. I, I I don't know Taylor until Prove Taylor, 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 Taylor Swift yeah. is making a claim. I think. She's don't no king, you sir. Dare. No, no, no. First off, like don't you dare. for different generations, yes. of course. Yes, Taylor Swift, Beyonce is like all this, right? Without a doubt, I think Beyonce is about to be named like the most influential. Uh, what's the name artist of the twenty first, twenty second? But she still century. doesn't have a Grammy, Adel. Because it's vibes. Yeah, really. I think she has a, she does have I mean, a That doesn't song. make sense. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't have like a best song with a Grammy. Anyways. Anyway, so um, for every generation, they're going to have theirs, right? But in reality, like there was only one that was that entertaining. I mean, entertaining, true. I, I think the word is not just entertaining. Talented. Talented is much more than entertaining for me. <laughs> if you make a documentary in any century and you show them Michael Jackson, everyone will still be in awe. Mm. Mm. Skill and the shock, yes, too. because that that music is timeless. Timeless. Also, he dangled the baby. From, uh, <laughs> that's also true. From balcony, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually true. Also, he. But yeah. if, if the documentary was focused on just his music, just his music, just his music. It, nothing else, nothing else. Not Sony and everything they try to do and destroy his uh, reputation, but which is very kind of similar to what's happening in Drake. But we'll get that later on. Mm. Um, just I think the amount of timeless music that he has, it is. Untouchable. Untouchable. Uh, albums after albums after albums after albums. So Tell me a bad Michael Jackson album. Mm. There's one called Bad, and it's still good. <laughs> it's, it's still so good. good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Michael Jackson has no bad albums. I mean, you just said there was a bad album. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, there's true, an album true. called Bad. That, that was yeah. the joke. Yeah. 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 You're an idiot. Was, Stop building. A, yeah. Blood on the Dance Floor wasn't that great. Blood really? on the Dance yeah. Floor? Came out on the one after all the retirement is still for, it's still win number one. Yeah, it's true. The, 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 it's any true. Was that with the galaxy? The one thing? that was like a cover. Uh, there was a blood. No, no, there was. The, I think it's like a checkered the board or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't like the that blood. I, it was. Blood. It was exactly. when Adobe uh, graphics. Oh, okay, Adobe okay. Photoshop okay. just for start. Yeah, 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 yeah. When, <laughs> when Mist first came out, Twix. <laughs> the same aesthetic. But I think he'll, he'll outlast. This is going to be a very music-heavy episode since, you know, we can, we're talking about Pretty Gibbs. So Drake. speak, yeah. No, before we get to Drake, I, again, we need to have, like, other conversations. Like, the Metro is opening, y'all. Woo! Alhamdulillah. Exactly. There's only one person because he's the one going to use it. Alhamdulillah, Woo-hoo! yeah. <laughs> no, I'm actually happy. For barely a month. That's, I, that's what I'm going to use I it for. I am looking but, yeah. forward to the evolution of our public transportation system, honestly. I of look, course. Yeah, I yeah. look forward to actually people using it on a daily basis. I mean, we don't have it station next to my office was any by the time everybody hears this it's already started on the on what's the name on the 12th well when is it starting 12th no what are you talking about what are you talking about where's the, where's the dates they're starting with three lines aren't they the yellow yeah first uh, of december is going to be the blue yellow and purple, purple lines purple and I'm not gonna tell you which line where they go. Maroon Turks. And then on the 15th. I'm sorry, I'm a graphic designer. I'm an architect. Maroon. Maroni. On the 15th of uh, December, another the red line and the green line is gonna open up, and then the orange line is opening up on 5th of January. Oh, so everything nice. is hopefully gonna be open within like a month. Or so yeah, I I, I hope traf- we traffic sucks less now. I hope so. We'll see. I mean, uh, they, I can't they, wait for the videos. I want to see the videos of people using the metro. I want the influencers to go and experience the whole thing, <laughs> so I can there's watch it videos. before I go. No, there's a lot of videos myself. of people using it and testing it and showing. No, what's not happening. not not the testing. No, I want the actual actual. Yes. Because that's what I do when okay. I travel, First when I do off, anything. I have to watch a video of someone doing something before I do it. Y'all don't have parking at your office. Y'all go to Kaft, right? So we have parking in Hamdullah. Oh, yes, that's true. You're the elitist. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all need to try it. You need to try it because you live in like forever and beyond. And I, and I have a metro station that's relatively close to my place that can take me 
after a couple of switches to a lot of different places in the city. But see, Anna, for me, it's I would like to use it to get to places where I know dark parking is going to get difficult or places that are I can easily access through, like, you know what I'm saying? And the traffic. You're, yeah. the, the places but you can places avoid Places I can avoid the traffic. Yeah. And I honestly do hope to use it. I generally, like, you know, want to get away from my car for a while. But I, I, I look forward to actually... Then it, it transforms the way that you interact with the city, doesn't it? Yep. Like you're opening up an entirely new pedestrian, uh, you know, option for me to say, hey, let me just go experience the city in a different way. And hopefully there's an economic benefit from that, at least like in terms of, you know, having new places open up around metro stations. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, like there's there's an effect that comes for, with that as well. The people are already capitalizing on that. The amount of businesses that are opening next to uh, metro stops that are under construction. Mm. As just waiting, they're just biding time because they know they're going to have foot traffic coming in. But some uh, some stations, I don't know where people are going to park. Well, that's that's the other problem. I know you yeah. can't just look at it in terms of just the metro. You need to also, you know, factor in the whole bus uh, route situation. Yeah, I, that's I the way you have an integrated that system. Al Alaya is going to have uh, what's the name? All these huge parking spaces. Mm. I remember that. Yeah. They, so I think they, recently they give the green light to go ahead that you can now license nice. the whole parking garage. Okay, but I heard that about that on Al Alaya Street. I don't know about the rest of the place. And I think the four major metro stations are going to have parkings. Uh, uh, Kaft is not going to have parking. Probably uh, there's a couple of parking yeah, spots uh, outside, uh, but yeah, exactly. like nothing, those nothing, ten, nothing on, nothing on <laughs> yeah. those ten are going to be filled up hundred percent. I'm not sure. No, no, they, they it it a, might have a, underground parking. Actually, I'm not sure. There's a parking sure. building next to it. There's a parking building. There's a parking. Yeah, yeah. but that's Kaft's. Yeah, that's Kaft's. So it's going to no, be limited yeah. either way. Yeah, but that's we're employee about parking. For the metro. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the one. We're talking about for the metro. Well, that's the idea, right? The idea of the metro is to get you away from, you know, using your car in one way, shape, or form. The stops themselves, yeah, they're not, that's not going to have parking. The four major stations, yeah, but the stops, uh, they're expecting you to just walk, get a bus, go to the metro scooter. station. Scooter. There's scooters, right? There are scooters. Yeah. Really? I was actually thinking of buying a scooter. Yes, but that's uh, just my personality. Yeah, that's, that's not yeah. like, that's very practical. Tur that's yeah. very Turks coded. I know, yeah. Yesterday, I almost ran over a kid in a scooter. Two points. Why didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so awful. It's not a game, number one. What this do you is mean? Life. No, do you I, mean? I love this new generation of kids hustling in any way, shape, or form to get yeah, to work. Because yeah. he, he obviously he works at the boulevard, mm -hmm. right? But he's riding this little Italian moped. and Oh, four points. <laughs> <laughs> a Vespa? <laughs> yes, basically a Vespa. Nice. And so there was a speed bump ahead of us, but there was a gap in the middle. Oh, no. So he wants to take that gap. Mm. I did not know that. All our sides of Vespa trying to lean in on me. Mm. And I was like, you're not going to lean in on me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Italy? Exactly. Challenge accepted. <laughs> exactly. Like, people need to understand this. I'm a very aggressive driver. Not in a way that, like, you know. Oh, no. Are you? <laughs> but if you're trying to cut me off, I'm not going to allow it. I but I'm like, why? Like, do a shot or something. Give me a signal so I can, like, make sure that I know what you're doing. Match if there's a week that. Nothing, not. He didn't. <laughs> Nothing. All I just saw was this, like, kid, you know, you have to sit like an asshole. Yeah. And he's like, mm, and he's just leaning in. I'm like, nah, 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 son, nah, nah. I started hitting on the gas. I saw, I saw the speed bump. Then I had to hit the brake. I was like, Ming. he just went through it. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is where we can't have nice things, either, you know. But yeah, all around my place, there's a lot of scooters, electric scooters. Shoof, it's useful and practical if you're in a neighborhood. Yeah, it, yeah, but definitely. You're not, you're not hitting the highway. Yeah, you're not hitting the highway. If for me, if I'm gonna, if it's a five minute thing that's gonna save me another 10, 15 minutes of walking, yes, I'll use it. So yeah, that's that's one yeah. option. You could, you could I'm use. kind of worried about the whole longboard culture that's gonna emerge. Why are you worried? The what? What? Longboards. What does it mean? What does? It's long... a it's a long skateboard basically, it's and skateboard the, your, with a you know, with a remote control people. usually. Now, now there's a lot of like electronic skateboards. There's like all sorts and kinds of them. Yeah, they've that, been does, around since like I don't know, that, 2014. Doesn't exactly, but now the with the metro, it's not to skateboard. It's for transportation. Yes, you're not that skating. Seems, that seems very you're longing. Very not very safe. Who said anything about safety? <laughs> <laughs> I just told you a kid on a Vespa tried to run me over, and you said yeah. in a car. I mean, no. how much would the longboard be worth? Five points. No, oh, wow. No, no, that's, no, 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 that's definitely no. less points. Less points. That's, that's, less one, points. that's one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. It's an easier so, target. That's one point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's one point, but you get like a coin. So, da ding. Yeah. What are you running, running around them over? No, we are not talking about vehicle assault, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That is not a Number one, one right imagine special. people just when they crash, they just throw coins like Sonic <laughs> <laughs> all around. Halal, <laughs> kid all around. It's called blood. It's not fun. 
<laughs> what do you mean? Like I'm speed bumps aren't, aren't but like I am I am mm-hmm. I am happy that finally the metro project is up and running. It's been going on for a long time, and honestly, like the city does need it. The traffic congestion is getting way too much at this point. It took me an hour and a half to get home b- by crossing Turkey. It was insane. I like I left yeah. like at five. Yeah. Traffic pro- is ridiculous. Yeah, the price of Well, success. keep in mind that uh, Riyadh is still like expanding. 90% highways. So traffic shouldn't stop. Or but speedways. Yeah, there's bottlenecks all around. Yeah. Can I play something for you so we can ditch the story and go somewhere else? Please. Yes. By all means. This is something I wanted to play a couple of days ago. And a couple of episodes ago, actually, I keep forgetting to play it. But I think today is the day y'all. Mm, we're there. <laughs> oh. It's a journalist, Christopher Sharp. Who, who said that Lockheed, there was a transfer between Lockheed Martin, Bigelow Airspace, and the CIA allegedly blocked this. Can you describe that? Um, what I can say is that it was blocked. Um, why it was blocked, I can, I can only surmise. Um, I was part of some conversations later on with some of those contract personnel where they, they had told all of us that is accurate. It, it was previously testified that there was biologics that were collected. Are you aware of any of that? I am, sir, aware of the... We're talking about aliens here. Biologics. Yeah. I love that okay. word, biologics. Yes. Okay. Reporting that biologics have been recovered. To your knowledge, any communication with a non-human life form? So the term communication is a bit of a trick word because mm. um, there's verbal communication like we're having now. Uh, the problem is you also have nonverbal communication. And so I would say definitively yes, but from a nonverbal meaning, when a Russian reconnaissance aircraft comes into U.S. airspace, we scramble two F-22s, and we are certainly communicating intent and capability. Um, I think the same goes with this. We have these things that are being observed over controlled U.S. airspace, um, and they're not really doing a good job hiding themselves. They're making it pretty obvious they have the ability to even interfere with our, our nuclear equities and our nuclear readiness. Nuclear what do these guys no. want? No. No. Show me videos. Show me so. pictures. <laughs> Who is this guy? So Give me evidence. The, the, uh, some other whistleblower. So the question here, Had, is, okay, they've brought out the aliens again. Mm-hmm. So the question is... What, been, by the way, since COVID, they've been doing this. Yes. So the question is, yeah, Adel, what fucked up thing is coming next? Genuinely, what there? What what's the distraction here? There's a distraction, but I don't know what is it from. And you've been playing on this since COVID. COVID yeah. happened. All of a sudden, you're like, "Hey, by the way, aliens are real." We call them UAPs, and you change everything, and you start making different names. Biologics. Now it's biologics. I mean. He's like, not nonverbal communication. That's me giving you the middle finger as yeah. I drive by. That's a nonverbal <laughs> communication. To be honest, I'm, I'm glad biologics exists in no, my vocabulary no, right now because no. it's my favorite disorder right now. <laughs> what is happening with you, biologics? <laughs> I, well, I, my biologics. He, he didn't give him the finger as he passed by. Nonverbal communication means he just, I thought I could have No, and, and, and for me, and another part of this you know, surprising element is. Why is it always just happening with the U.S.? Why is nobody else seeing? No, Mexico these, had some these, aliens. Then was it Mexico quit. or quit Brazil? That. Yeah. Quit. When did that happen? Oh, you didn't know this? No. Oh, I need to find this for you. Okay, these biologics are not just. They, they can only speak English. What's what's going who on? Who had who had do, the do tiny you know, aliens? Wait, a couple of wait. Do you know what they call them in Kuwait? What? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Where, where you, is it? UFOs, but it's it's short for Ambe flying objects. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our brothers and sisters in Kuwait. Uh, we love you guys. We okay. love you. We love he you was guys. really happy about that yeah. joke. I'm just letting you know. He's like skipping his season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's wiggling his feet. Yeah. I was so happy. He's yeah. literally wiggling his feet. Okay, so this happy. is on the 14th of November, 2024. What? Okay. Oh, recent. Like two weeks ago? London. A video clip of a white orb UFO off the coast of Kuwait have been discovered on a U.S. government network. Yeah, okay, U.S. Let me finish. A congressional hearing has been told. This is the same hearing that we just played a second ago. Uh, some journalist named Michael, I, I'm not even going to read your last name, founder of the Public News Service, said that a 13-minute clip was found in U.S. Department of Defense files based on comments from a source. The clip of the UFO 20 miles off Kuwait was filmed in high-definition color video, and it was captured from a helicopter, Sky News reported. <laughs> His name is Schellenberger, by the way. Okay. I, I can't believe this guy. Okay. Uh, Schellenberger said halfway through the video, the person said the orb is joined by another orb that briefly comes into the frame from the left before rapidly moving again out of the frame. The video was discovered on the Secure Internet Protocol Router Network used by the Department of Defense to transmit classified information. 
this is on Arab news. So this, like this is not me getting it like yeah, off some weirdo website. I know, so. I, I know that those two orbs were. Don't don't say when a daddy orb loves no, a mommy no, orb. No, please. No, <laughs> please. No, <laughs> no, Turks. No, I hate you. <laughs> no, they were very obviously alien influencers linking up around mm. Kuwait. I'm like mm. oh, they get coke up head here and. I just thought it was like two fake breast implants that were just flying through the air. Wow. Checks out. Exactly. Checks out. This is two the white hard, orbs. This is yeah. the, uh, the hard and rigorous analysis y'all call it. Coming exactly. Before, honestly. No, but my question is if we know that they're white orbs and they're not unidentified, are they? We know exactly what they are. They're well, orbs. It's an orb. Okay. Like, it, it looks like an orb. He didn't say, yo, that was the orb. I mean, I feel like people are still unaware. I'm trying to find the newspaper. The vast amount of, of, of weather phenomena that is complex and happens once every blue moon. There's a newspaper that posted the first UFO sighting in Kuwait was in 1978. Mm. And I'm trying to find the article. It's in Arabic. Is this, is that, wasn't that the year the ET came up? Is that 1982? That isn't the Okay. Oh, man, I'm Maybe just trying to make sure. Who would, who, People get inspired, you know, from what places. country came out with two tiny aliens? Mexico. And oh, that, Mexico. That, that was Mexico. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> that was, oh, that was awesome. What the fuck happened with that? Because that, that was bullshit. That was, that was bullshit. That wasn't real. Aliens. That was the most bullshit shit I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah. It was like, uh, here's this, I don't know, it's not paper mache, it's the aliens. Yeah, Bishabab, look, and one of them yeah. might be pregnant for they some reason. They could have been just mummified pygmies. That's any another way of looking at it. You're not funny. That's not, that's not actually meant to be funny. That's, that's a that's, real thing. Yeah, that's theories. <laughs> Look, I really hope this is real. I don't know if it's real or not. Hubot ajsam gharibah fil Kuwait. That's okay. Kuwait every day. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen... Have you, have you been to Kuwait? Kulla ajsam gharibah. Kulla yom tihubot. Wow. This is spot on. This is spot on. You're right. This is a true article. <laughs> <laughs> like a, oh yeah let me see what year was this uh i'm already blind so i really have no clue uh 1979 january sunday 21st of january 1979 this is the kuwait okay. and there was another one <laughs> from al-watan طبق طائر هبط في الكويت. No, that was that was a fight over مفطح and got really. Oh, for our non-Arabic uh, speaking audiences, they're saying that a UFO landed in Kuwait and all telecommunications was cut during the time when it landed. Oh, it didn't say UFO. It said a flying that's, saucer. That's all. طبق, that's طبق. all makes sense. طبق طائر. Okay, yeah. like this says. Like, you know, communications died. This is 1978. There was only like one telephone pole. Yeah, what communications? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a sandstorm will wipe what? that communication out. Yeah. So you're telling me Kuwait has Pigeons been under the eyes of happened? aliens for the past 30 years? Exactly. Mm. Kuwait is the source. That makes a lot of fucking sense. That makes sense. a lot of sense. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yo! You know, they've you been... cracked the code, you big ass. Oh, no, you are one of them. Yeah, exactly. You mm. are one of them. He's an implant. Yes. They put them all. Adil at Samal Gariba, Adil. Yes, that's the stitly. Yes, there we go. You're the one who they found in Men in Black when they opened up his head. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was you, son. Like you, okay, why, why are you here? <laughs> what do y'all want? <laughs> yes, exactly. What do you seek? I mean, th- we can talk about this all day, obviously, and we would love to. <laughs> where that's why we're asking. Why do you exist, sir? And where's your other family members from? Quit. Any knowledge, wisdom, the there, secret there to eternal life. Thing, there was a thing called uh, the Gulf War. You might have heard about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. That's why we left. Yes. Mm, that's what the war is about. Mm. Yeah. Respect to our brothers and sisters in Kuwait is just a joke. Yeah. We're just playing yeah. with y'all. Just a joke. Yes, but weird. We do think weird bodies in Kuwait makes sense. Yeah, and we also think number one is is unnatural. He's, I, he's, I he's have, a biologic. I have, the, bio- I have yeah. the weird biologics. I, yeah. I think he's happily. I have the weirdest body. Okay. Pause. Anyway, mm. y'all want to get to Drakey Drake? You mean mm. you mean? History's biggest bitch move. <laughs> oh, wow. Someone's salty. No, I'm not like, I mean. No, he's on point. He's no, on point. <laughs> Drake, like, I would have respected you more if you just shot Kendrick. That would be <laughs> Oh, wow. Yo, yo. We don't condone violence here. I don't know, but like, that would have been like, yeah. Uh, that After everything we just said a few minutes ago, we don't <laughs> yeah. condone violence yeah. here. Or biologics. Like, <laughs> or biologics. like, this guy literally. Hey, they told him, hey, Drake, there's this song that's calling you a, a pedophile, a sex trafficker, a creep, and an abuser. Yeah, yeah get and, demonetized. And, and... <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. And it has 500 million streams on Spotify. And Drake said, it does not have 500 million streams on Spotify. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, really? That's that, that's that's the issue here. I mean, it's a, I feel like it's a bit more nuanced. He ignored than, all of that. I, just focus on one point. And, and I think it's a bit more it's, nuanced than it's that. Like if but it that's go, a good if, summation. If it goes to court, actually, and Drake has to, it goes to discovery, and like they have to evaluate the lyrics of "Not Like Us," and Drake has to provide just of a cause. I'm like. Okay. Well, okay. See, what you said is very important because a lot of people think it's a lawsuit. It's not a lawsuit. No, it's, it's, it's a, a request. Lawsuit? It's a petition. It's a request for information. A pre-legal. I have lawsuit. feels. My feels say mm -hmm. that you did something wrong, and I'm requesting this information from all of you so I can build a case, a case. based on the feels that I already have. Why would I give you the information that you want? So because I, I feels. It's As someone that has a contract with you, I feel that you did something wrong with to me. I, okay. And this is why I am suing So you. is this the legal way to say you flirt my feelings? Yes. Yes. Okay. Literally. But, but you're not doing anything about it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, I'll read it for you. So uh, it's, it's basically, tell me the truth. Exactly. Yeah, tell pre, me the truth. Yeah, exactly. Illegally. Yeah. A pre-legal okay. action is, it's basically, they are defined to respond. They, they are obligated to respond in some capacity. It might not be a legal case, but... They have to say something, and they UMG, have to say they have to put a statement out. Yeah, and UMC and UMG said, "Yo, you are in your feelings." Mm. Okay. What he what they're trying to do? So you need to get this from multiple ways. First off, everyone saying this has nothing to do with Kendrick. It does. I mean, it has everything to do with. He Kendrick, seems to be the right? center of attention here. What Drake is saying, he's saying that I know for a fact that you guys boosted his numbers. Okay. And people are saying no. And even Universal said, hey, people like what they like. You can't bring bots into this. People have the right to. But everybody music. knows that <coughs> bots were used. Okay. It's an industry thing. Streams were farmed because that's what the industry does. That's what they've always been doing. So let's go back here for a sec. How long ago, how, how long has this been happening in the industry? Since Spotify came into the game. Yes. Since okay, and this is happening on an individual basis or like does everybody do it? It's a label. Spotify basis. and UMG have a deal yeah. okay. for the artists. When streaming services came around, right, they, everybody was trying to make a deal with Apple. Apple wasn't trying to make deals. And then Apple was making deals with artists mm -hmm. because it's a di totally different thing. That's where Frank Ocean ruined everything for everybody. He got like an exclusive... Uh, Frank Ocean released a, a weak album. I forgot which, which label he was. I think it was UMG, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I forgot which, which label he was in. Endless. Or Interscope. I think it was Endless. And then when he dropped it two days later, he dropped... Another album on Apple. Exactly. I think it was... Uh, it wasn't Blonde. It was one before. I forgot. Channel Orange? No, no, it wasn't challenged. But anyways, go on. Anyway, different he, albums on different streams. Exactly, he, he days in between. And he but broke. one was with the album, which was the good one that everybody heard and loved. And he gave those guys a yeah. weak ass album just so he get off his contract. So yeah. when that happened, that changed That's the bullshit. whole game. Yeah. When Spotify came around, because I, I I'll tell you what record labels are not gonna tell you. Apple is not gonna give you any chance for you to pay to play unless they have ownership. What do you mean? Okay, so break that down. What does that mean, pay to play? Exactly? Basically, yo, listen, Spotify, I have this artist with this big label. We want to push him. And so we will pay for you to give him more exposure. By putting him in more playlists, by yes. adding him more into and the And this algorithm. is not illegal. This is something that they already do. It's a Spotify service. offers it as a service. Okay. So, right? so far, there's nothing wrong going exactly. on here. So this has been the practice for a long, long time. What's... There's so much going on into this because everyone's trying to figure out what is Drake's direction in this. Mm. Does he want to take... Is it because of the beef? No. He's saying it's because... Of the, everyone's saying it's because of the business. Okay, if it's because of the business, you're suing your own record label. You're saying that your own record label plotted against you and that's what he's trying to get to. But didn't, didn't his own record label also do this for him? Let me finish. Mm. He's trying to turn this into a civil recall case. He's trying to say that you, UMG, along with Spotify, along with... I forgot who else... You guys conspired to come and attack me. The reason I'm saying this is because I am in contract negotiations with you, UMG, and now my price has went down since the beef. Yeah, but when you say come and attack me by boosting Not Like Us, exactly. that's by, the way... By supporting Kendrick, mm -hmm. who's also your artist, you're supporting him to basically come at me and attack me. What he's saying is, I thought we had an agreement. I thought we were friends. If I do this, y'all will give me this play. Now, why did you give him the same play? That's what he's saying. Why did you put both of us on an evil playing field? Y'all need to give each other your opinions for a second. 
الو لا لا ذس از اون مايك لا الو اه مدير اوه ما بعرف صار هير لا اتس نوت هير الو اسمعني ايوه الو طلب بس السياره ايوه السياره واقفه تحت غسلها ما في مكتوب ايه غسل بس برا Our heart stopped when he when he got trying. Uh, it took forever to get his car wash. Anyway, so if I'm looking at it in a different way, like if I'm a guy and I'm, I'm I have two fighters in my in my roster, right? And the fighters just decided yeah. to say, "Hey, we're gonna beat each other." Okay, fine. I can't stop y'all. As a business, no, no, no. no, no I can't as stop a business, y'all. step no, no. right up. Step I can right stop up. y'all, but okay. as a business. I'm a win either way because I'm gonna make money. Exactly. And if I see one guy beating the other guy, then yeah, I'll put more money behind the first guy. No, I'm, I'm gonna boost guy. both. I don't think I, exactly. Yeah, I don't no. think I'm gonna put more money. I think what UMG did said, "Yo, I'm gonna boost him and boost him, and because people are gonna come after both of them, and I'm gonna make all the money at the end." So it's a huge win for me. So Drake's whole uh, scenario, what he's trying to figure out if if they boosted Kendrick more than him. That's all himself. he's saying. No, but yeah, uh, no, no. Drake is not telling you that he I had that boosted. privilege. Exactly. He's saying that you guys did this for Kendrick. He's not telling you that it was done for him. He's saying that I know through the. By the way, this whole lawsuit came together. I don't think because it's it's convenient that it came right now. You had since August to do this, but I think it was all because of not even the GNX album. Like everything that he used, the material he used as a case. It's all what the Drake fans on Twitter have been passing around and seeing as conspiracy theories. Okay. All the images, like he in, in the in the filing, he's talking about NFR podcast. It's a Canadian podcast, two white dudes, mm. and he was like, "Oh, they were paid in order for them to uh, to support," which we'll get to in a second. But I think Drake is doing this honestly. I think because his value went down, and because the business went down, his contracts went down. No one's touching him. Nike is not going to give you a new contract anymore. Your whole business is getting ruined. And now since the business is getting ruined, I need to fight back. I need to get something back. So rather than going after Kendrick, because I can't go after Kendrick, you need to understand this. There's no mm-hmm. way for me to go after Kendrick. Because if I go say, yo, this guy called me a certified pedophile, then Kendrick is going to say, oh, I'm not going to say nothing. Fine. I'm just going to let my wife sue you. The one that you said that she had a baby with my best friend. The one that you said that there was domestic violence case between me and her that I was hitting her. You are trying to defame my wife. That's not even in the music industry. It has nothing to do with it. It's just an instant bystander. He knows this. A Whitney alone can just do a case that's going to destroy all of Drake. But he's going after the hmm, music. Yeah. To tell them, listen, the song is not popular, guys. Business as usual. But it was Universal that was making it popular. Or else this guy would have never got there. Because at the same time, Drake is still the number one streamed uh, artist on Spotify to this day. Because so, listen, it, you need to understand there's a dis, there's a difference between criminal uh, a cl- criminal uh, slander and just being mean. Drake was being uh, sorry. Kendrick was being mean, like yo, you're creepy and you're weird, and what Drake did, he was actually libel. Like, hey, I am accusing you of beating your wife mm. because. No, but he called him a pedophile. Isn't that like that's an no? Too. Yeah. He said certified lover boys, certified pedophile. It was an insult. Okay. I, I I don't like you, and I will insult you. Like he didn't go out there and say at this time. Oh, at that's this bima time, ma'na, yeah, kind of. Yes, yes bima. Okay. It's he didn't go at this time. I at nine forty two nine forty two p.m. at this location in but, Alberta. But, I accuse you, Drake, in Alberta, <laughs> Drake, of doing so and so with another person. But wasn't that the second suit that he filed? No. The second suit was also a request for information. Okay, he about was telling slander. There was something about slander. Yeah, he's telling UMG that you knew that Kendrick's gonna release a song calling me all these things, and you allowed it to happen. Okay, why didn't you protect me? That's why what would he's we? Saying. Why would you? Isn't what's what's because free he thinks he's for? that special. And let's say where go. What's free speech coming then? Why would we protect? You? Like the New York that's filing what, on Monday, mm. the new petition isn't quite a lawsuit. Instead, a so-called pre-action filing aimed taking the depositions from key figures at UMG. And I heart radio also mm. in order to obtain more information that might support Drake's accusations in a future lawsuit. 
In seeking that information, Drake's lawyers say they already have enough evidence to pursue a claim of defamation. Defamation. There we yeah, it's his, his lawyers are ready. You ruined my reputation. It's That's a, basically defamation. No, is. Yeah, but it's hard to prove defamation. Mm. Anyway, I guess UMG, but they might also tack on claims of civil fraud mm-hmm. and racketeering based on what they discovered from the deposition. The, the what? what they're trying to say is you guys colluded against Yeah, them. that's where the racketeering comes in. Mm. Exactly. You, know, you guys are two big organizations. Both of y'all were standing to profit from this move and both of y'all conspired together to boost those numbers against me, which has mm-hmm. led to the, the, you know, the tumbling of my value now. Shuf, a part of me feels like he wouldn't have really filed these cases if he didn't have something that he knew that could help him win? If he had something, he could have just went for a lawsuit. This well, is a fishing expedition. It's a fishing expedition. And this fishing expedition could take forever. Mm, to build the case. Exactly. Yeah. This could be years in the making. So this is his public way of saying, y'all really hurt my feelings. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do something about it. I'm not yeah. just going to stand here I mean, and take that. Oh, think, Drake is carroting? No, I okay. think, exactly. I think what Drake is doing, he's saying, I want this information. Once he gets it, he's not going to sue. Mm. He's just gonna put it out there. Say, hey, I told you guys one, two, three, four, five. I have the actual information. This actually happened, and then allow him to win the public eye uh, again. Play victim. Yeah, of course, he's Jewish. Yeah. So when he does that, right, <laughs> he's gonna go and basically go back to all the companies, <laughs> <laughs> right? Go back to all the companies and say, hey, look, I told you that that dude was fake. All this fake information, business as usual. People love me now. That's not how it works, though. Yeah, people don't love you because you everything that Drake right. has done hasn't worked. Yeah, like people, people already. Th- <sighs> this this is the whitest thing Drake has ever done. In yeah, his this life. is like purely white, like purely purely. I like, will use the court of side. law to get my rights back. <laughs> I am no. going to sue you, Mister Duckworth. No, but here again, there's Mr. another Duckworth. That's wow. his name. If, I, I love the fact that everyone's trying to fight. Like what? say, Kendrick oh, Drake Lamar. is standing Kendrick up for Lamar's the name what's the name Duckworth. for the music to the music industry. Yeah, yeah. Relax, bro. So you telling everybody and fighting against other people, trying to change the narrative, saying, yo, he's doing this for the little man. He never gave two shits about the little man ever in his life. No, man, he, not, he, not the, the... he only did it when the system went against him. Yeah. Oh, since you guys put this against me, something that I use forever, now I, I, I want to break the whole thing. Class. No, I'm not going to play the No, no, none of y'all are yeah. going to play. I'm going to take my ball and go home. Yeah. No, but again, the question here is, haven't labels been doing that for a long time? Like Forever. Funk Flex, I think he came out with a tweet and he said, hey, by the way, like all of these radio stations have been getting paid forever just to boost tracks, just to play songs. So what's the difference here with... Yeah, but that's a payola scheme though. What is, explain that. Hold on. Pay to play, basically. I actually found an article. Yeah. And the, the way I understood it is, a hey... A while back you, about this. Don't, don't, okay, don't tell me to read it for you the okay. way I understood it. Uh, I might be wrong. Then let me just read it for you. This is the sophisticated version of uh, I have a meme here that's supposed to. <laughs> no, this is where <laughs> explain the situation. This is where we we, we appreciate truth over this truth. This one is. came yeah. out back in July, right? Preventing payola in the music industry. Uh, why are some songs played constantly on the radio? Some songs are promoted by sponsors who pay to play a particular song on the radio. This pay for play exchange, where artists are are artists or labels pay broadcasters for airtime is called payola. Scholars disagree on the level of harm payola presents to the music industry. Some argue modern music is pulled by consumers more than... I lost myself. Conglomerate. schemes. Others, others, however, contend that pay for play decreases opportunities for unrepresented artists within limited, with limited resources. Okay. These are the same complaints that we always hear. Entertainment Magazine Variety coined the term payola in 1938. Oh, snap. Yeah, this is why I want to read it for you. The practice of payola, however, holds a much longer history than radio and digital streaming. Attempts to regulate the practice date the practice dated, dates back to the mid 1890s. Well, with what like chanting groups, <laughs> but, <and Hara. laughs> like you hardcore know. poetry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> barbershop <laughs> portraits. <laughs> when some music publishers agreed to paying singers to promote their songs, this early, this, oh, I can't see anymore. There we go. This early attempt to self-regulate payola failed because music publishers still de- delivered payments in secrets. Ultimately, the practice proved to be a tenacious problem in the music industry. So somewhere, I want to skip this. So somewhere I think 1959, the FCC and the Federal Commission Act, they came together and said, okay, radio stations, if you are going to have a play-for-play system, you need to disclose when uh, who paid for it 
mm-hmm. and you have to disclose it before playing the song. Live yeah, yeah, on that, radio? That, yes. Okay. That, that just kills the vibes, honestly. Okay. <laughs> but that's uh, the same thing that is happening with YouTube. Where you got to mention your sponsors. A radio station must disclose that it received payment for playing a song at the time. And, and at the time the song is played. And I'm playing Champs' song. This song is by, uh, Spot sponsored, by, by, sponsored by Ad and his, I don't know, pumpkin. And <laughs> pumpkin spice pumpkin latte punch. story. Exactly, right? Uh, play Champs' song. Uh, somewhere around, I think, 2023, they were trying to change the laws because of what happened with digital streaming and so on. There we go. Because but digital streaming is not. It never passed. And again, digital streaming has no DJ. But payola schemes are still considered illegal under certain circumstances. But there's a lot of loopholes, like with every law in America, mm-hmm. that allows that to happen. And again, well, thank you for that music history refresher, Mr. Professor Adel. 1890s. Yeah, like, bravo, honestly. <laughs> well done, sir. Uh, so, yeah, so it just screams to me of just sour grapes. Just screams to me of sour grapes. It screams to me of just not being able to accept that you really got your ass whooped. And, hey, people don't look at me the same way anymore. I'm going to do something about it. I'm not going to let this go. I think Drake's issue still thinks that not like us was the reason he lost. I mean, I think that was the capstone. That was the on nail his, in the on, Yeah, that was yeah. the capstone on the grave. You know, like you've already been buried. Yes. This is just like to let people know you were buried here with not like us. That's what buried. Because the whole hey, Kendrick is winning happened right after Euphoria and kept going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it didn't happen at the end. At Euphoria kept going. The whole tide has shifted. Mm. But I think to him, it's basic about the business. Now it has nothing to do. He could care less about Kendrick. To him, I want money. That's all it is. Mm. So this is another lawsuit for money. If I'm gonna go wild in flames, I might as well take a big paycheck. I think he never expected that it would get this bad. Like, okay, I'm getting into a battle, right? Like I'm gonna call this guy some names. He's going to call me some names. I'm going to say worse shit about him. I'm not going to be ostracized from the community, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm it's not, not going to end in exile. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to be excommunicated from the culture. Mm. And that's kind of what's happening. Yes. Yeah. You know, he's, he's... And then you start making moves that actually added more fuel to the fire. All he had to do was disappear for a while. He, he, he can't do that. He's exactly. the biggest star he can't in the world. No, 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 no. You know? He can do that. He didn't want to do that. Yeah. The ego had the stupid. Exactly. Yes. Major, no uh energy. So <laughs> you stay there and say, you know what? No, I'm going to stay around. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Okay, all you do is just keep hurting I'm, more and more of your legacy. Question, how many songs did he release after the beef? I can't a, a bunch, like he, like three or four. Really? Yeah, no, three or more four. No, no, there was, it was way more, more, but I think three was like the official ones. Yeah, three. That came out, then got removed. No, they're still there. I just checked today. Like there's uh, a, a part there's, of the beef or just no, 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 just no, after, after. after. Like, okay. like just get a random bunch yeah. of Lucy's. And, 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 and those didn't work. His features also for other artists didn't work. And yeah. so there was already a pattern happening. So to him was like, you know what? Also, another thing. He can't really go after Kendrick Lamar, even if he wanted to. Even though UMG told him before the lawsuit, said, hey, if this is about your reputation, sue Kendrick Lamar, we'll jump in line with you. We have no problem. Mm. Sue him for defamation for what he did to you. Tumble, tumble. You, you don't need to sue us, right? But no. why But why can't he sue Kendrick Lamar? Free speech? No. Because he, he, he can sue him back. He can, he can sue him for defamation. Okay. And then what, do, what does Kendrick Lamar have to do? Well, Go and like, talk to every single woman that Drake did anything with. Mm. And that opens up a whole new door into your whole life that you never wanted to open. This is a major bluff, basically. Let's yeah. well, zoom. Let us, zoom. Cut, let, let, <laughs> exactly. let, us cut, let us come in with a brush and go through your entire life. Exactly. Those yes. lawyers can go through every single person, through every single lawsuit, through every single... Anyone that was annoyed by him at a concert, they're going to talk to that person. So, he, I'm pretty sure he wants to sue, but his lawyer's going to, you know what? Don't, yeah, we can't. It's going to open a door on him. Yeah. It's going to open a huge door on him, and it's going to make him even look weaker. And even if he gets any evidence, it's still going to make him look weak. Well, that's the thing. This makes him look so weak. Like, as number one said, like, you are... A bitch. <laughs> yeah, yes, I think that's putting it mildly at this point, honestly. <laughs> that's simply the meme for that guy saying, oh, he's like, you know, I wasn't feeling good today. He's like, let me, let me hear your heart. He's like, hmm. Seems like you don't have a dog in you. Because <laughs> 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 we're gonna have to do some extras. I think you might be a bitch. <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. Like it's it's just it's like historic bitch move. True. Like of epic epic proportions. Like, you know, there was the problem with it. No matter what he tries to do, this 
just made it worse for him in the public opinion. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, the like, court of public opinion is not going to forget this. If you are, if you are looking to actually get the people back, this is making you look even worse to the people. Like, yo, we all know you just got knocked out. We all know that Kendrick just danced over your 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 lifeless body, right? And we all know he just dropped a great album where he didn't even mention your name and still mm-hmm. banged. What are you going to do? And I think that's the thought that's killing him, right? Like he knows people are thinking, what are you going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to create great music today, <laughs> you know? I'm going to show you how hurt I am by going through you <laughs> with the legal system. Yes. You know? And that's why we have laws. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we live in a society, right? You can't just hurt my feelings and ruin my brand value. That's just how wrong. How is a Canadian going to sue an American while Trump is in office? That oh. doesn't make sense. It's even funnier. Okay. Trump is not going to allow yeah, that. Imagine if we get like, I don't know, 20% tariff on all Drake songs or something. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> I mean, truth, he's, I think oh, he's still well. going to be one of the biggest stars in the world. I think a lot of people are still going to play he his still music. Is. That's he's, not going to change. He, he just hates the fact that someone beat him. It's just moving forward. With Pusha T, it was he'd say, oh, you're washed up. But nobody cares about you. Hey, yo, you can't say that with Kendrick. You can't say that to the number There's one a song, song that you summer. have that said, hey, you have someone featuring this song and saying, we are the big three. Mm. We are the big three. And he mentioned Cole, Kendrick. And you, Aubrey. And you. Aubrey. So you're there. You're on that song. Mm. You it was on your album. So, so we think. Do we think that that he overreacted now? I think he took the bait. He took the bait. I think he thought that hey, it was a setup. Yeah, it was a setup. All of this. Was I, a setup. I don't think. I don't think it was a setup. I think he took. The, look, I have a theory that might go real wild. Like this. If Would you, you tell like me, we, we want me to put on my conspiracy. Yes, hat? please, sir. Please. Conspiracy. Please. Add it on. This is why I said Michael Jackson a few minutes ago. Mm. So what was the conspiracy behind Michael Jackson, the whole bullshit that happened? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I heard that. Tell okay, go on, go on. It was that it was end of his contracts. He owned major stock in Sony. And I think he owned a lot of masters and they wanted it back. But they couldn't afford it for the money that he was asking for. And so they started ruining his reputation to force him to sell. By basically putting out all the allegations of child abuse and so on and so forth. Exactly. Mm. And pushing it further and taking to take him to court, even though he won that court case. Making him look like a crazy person. Exactly. Even though he did kind of act like a crazy mm. person. Yeah. yeah, but still. The dangling yeah. baby thing was so a cool. So that happened, right? Yeah. So when I look at Drake, Drake is in a, new, in a new renegotiation year with the UMG. Okay. His last contract was two years ago was for $400 million. Okay. It was said that he already made that money back plus more mm. to UMG. So he knows his value. So It is set. It is set. Mm. So he was wrapping up his concert. At the end of his concert, that's when the negotiation was supposed to start. Mm. Right? He was on this tour. So, For a while. Yeah, a local tour. Mm. But it was in the US. I think it was only in the US house. I have no idea. Anyway. Mm. So before his tour ends, like that comes out, Kenji goes at him. Right? And then he feels the need to respond. But he stayed 17 days without responding. Mm-hmm. So I was saying, was he afraid? Blah, blah, blah. I was saying a lot of things, right? But I think Kendrick was, uh, I mean, Drake was trying to make sure that all his eggs were in the right basket mm-hmm. before he made a move. And then he, gave, he got the confidence that, yo, go make the move. And then he went and made the move, and they were like, oh, by the way, no, we're not going to support you alone. We're also going to support Kendrick. When you say, that's the thing. When you say he got the confidence, what kind of confidence would he get? Right? Yeah, go ahead, man. Attack him. We'll, yeah. we'll give you the full support. That's from, the assurance from yeah, the label. Yeah, exactly. You, are, you, are, you have the biggest contract in music history. You're the boy. You're yeah. the boy. You're the boy. I think exactly. The boy what, got this. They gave him the legal of, the legal of equivalent of... <laughs> mm. But again, at the end of the day, we're talking about rap beef here. We're talking about people talking shit about other people, right? Like, and 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 never in the history of rap beef has litigation been brought in, right? Because yes, because let's take it back for a second. Move. Hold on, hold on. Let's go back, let's go back for mm. a second. All right. So, I think if that did happen and they gave him the green light, either they knew that Kendrick could get him, or when they saw Kendrick get him, they're like, you know what? This is an opportunity for us. To reduce the dollar value. This is where this is where weapons manufacturers get their rocks off. Because yo, everybody dies. Because everybody, exactly, everybody needs guns. And, I st- and who makes money here at the end? I still make all the money. Guess what? I make two coffins. Make no. coffins. <laughs> okay. So look at it from the UMG side. If I get rid of Drake or Drake doesn't renew anymore with me, because it seems like he's not renewing. He's asking me for a billion or some shit, mm. right? I already have Kendrick now. 
So if I get you out of the picture, I can make him the next star for the next five years. So as UMG, I got options. Mm. As Drake, either goes independent and relies on people finding him. Which is what he was going for though, right? I would, no one knows. Mm. If he was going independent, how long would that last? I mean, he's Drake at this point. He, yes, has the, he has the audience. He has the audience. How long would that last when you don't know what's happening? If you're not following Drake all the time. Mm. Over time, over three, four, five, six years, mm. what happens? He's not getting younger. Mm. So does he still want to stick around? Does he want to have legacy? What does he want to do? All the people that are independent, no one talks about them because the media is not pushing for them anymore. The record labels are not pushing for the names to be out there. Mm. What was the last time you heard about Chance the Rapper? Uh, didn't he do an SNL skit like a couple years ago? Thank you. What was the last time you heard about Frank Ocean? <laughs> right. I mean, he's not doing shit. He's just like Eric about doing his life away. <laughs> you know? I'm saying all the independent artists, you don't hear nothing about them. Mm. Yeah, okay. But again. So again, look at it from Drake's point of view. I am the biggest artist. I can go independent. It can be great for me. It could be bad for the music industry. Yes, I can do all of that. But longevity is not there. And for me, it's just funny that he's looking at UMG and he's looking at, yo, you guys didn't protect me. Why the fuck we would protect you? We also represent the other guy. Exactly. Like, and, and we are looking at In it. the case, he said that there's also proof that people who were on Drake's side at the label were fired. Okay. Okay. Sorry, what? Yeah, he's saying there's people who are supporting me in the label were fired because UMG doesn't want to support me. This is part of the suit? or This the, is part of the suit, okay. right? Mm. This is for the request of information. That's mm. why I don't delete any emails. Nothing give us all the information for us to search for ourselves. Mm. No, they're just hunting. They're trying to figure out what's there. They don't know what's there. They just made enough information mm. for them to get go through the courts, for them to get access to figure out. This is what the fans I, are saying. as UMG, can say, I'm sorry, was he your employee or mine? Mm. If he was my employee and I gave him a direction, it doesn't matter what the reason for the direction. He decided to go against the company policy. So I have the right to release him. Mm. So even all that doesn't work. I truly believe they're just fishing. He thinks there's something there. He wants all the information. He wants to see who said what to what, what everybody said and what everybody did. Even And it's not even about the music. Not about, he just wants to see, oh, who are my enemies here? So I can tell people, yo, this guy is not that great. Other people came after me. And you're just doing it in the most public way possible. Yeah. And you're and you're in the most Jewish way possible. Yo, man, we're, we're sorry, people. They're just attacking us. They're harming us. I'm just I'm just a singer. Law school. <laughs> Joe you know. Joe Budden went off on him. He was like, "Hey, people hate you because you're a piece of shit." <laughs> mm. He was very blunt. He's like, "You're you're sending messages to people's wives. You're sending messages to people's baby mothers." You're sending money to people's baby mothers. Yikes. You're not respecting anyone's life. And then he mentioned Metro Boomin's uh, problem. Why Metro Boomin hates Drake. He didn't see the story, but I, he kind of actually Alluded. confirmed to it. But Metro, Metro is, Boomin came out and said it wasn't over a girl. He's, yes, it was about his mother. Yes. What? Okay. Metro Boomin's mother passed away. Okay. Drake said, I don't give a fuck that your mother passed away. Send me my beats. What the fuck? The Drake track that finished, the Metro Boomin track that Drake finished, finished it six days after Metro Boomin's mother passed away. Wow. Exactly. That is That is really up. terrible. And that's why Metro Boomin said, hey, if I tell you what our problem is, it's not going to look good for him. But that was the rumor that was going around for a while, but none of us knew shit. But until Joe came out and everybody else was like, yo, actually, it is. It is what it is. Yeah, sounds about right. It's kind of the kind of thing a piece of shit would do. Exactly. So yeah. Joe came out and he was like, yeah, it's like, you guys don't see the guy that we see behind the scenes. The guy that you see is the end product. Behind the scenes, we see the asshole. Mm. We see the controlling, manipulating yes. guy that Kendrick actually talked about. We see the Israel of the music industry. Mm -hmm. Yikes. You know, Judah. <laughs> <laughs> in, in musical form. So anyway, that's interesting. Looking forward to see what happens with all of that. I mean, the, honestly, again, it just, if anything, it just makes more, makes the whole thing more of a joke. You know, makes it even funnier. I mean, yo, this guy is so butthurt that he he literally trying to fish to build the case the other funny thing is before we bounce little so joe Budden was talking about this he said, he's like i he's like i heard that little wayne called kendrick to ask him about that line and kendrick didn't pick up so little wayne went into the booth mm. oh i mean that that i i really hope that's not true because I really know that if Lil Wayne comes out with something and Kendrick decides to respond, it's not going to be good hey. for Wayne. 
<laughs> if it's that's rap, gonna be good for us. If it's rap, yeah, no personal bullshit. I'm gonna enjoy it. If, you know it's gonna yeah. be. It's gonna be fire. Yeah, it's gonna be fire. But if it's gonna be personal. I mean, there's a picture of Birdman kissing the There we go. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's out there. There's a whole lot of problems. They can go there's Drake sleeping with his girl when he was in jail. There's, there's a lot of issues because personal. But if yeah. it's just purely rap, I look forward to it. I would love it. I would hope that Lil Wayne, as an elder statesman at this point of the game, would kind of take he a step back. He doesn't know he's right. an elder statesman. That's the problem, bro. Know. That's the problem. He doesn't even know what day it is of the week. So, you know, just take a step back. And I just love, like... They tweet that little way and just sent out like, man, the fuck did I do? <laughs> <laughs> do you know after? He, after Why are y'all talking about me? You know, <laughs> after he put that, I actually went back to to figure out. Oh, let me know what this. To figure out what did uh, Kendrick actually say? Because when we heard it, it was like uh, irony, uh, he's hard like, work, let little Wayne down, right? Yeah. I, I kind of understand why he took it like that. Mm. Why he felt that that little why little Wayne felt that there was a diss mm. because it can you can take it in two ways you can take it as in oh I looked up to this guy and now he's disappointed that I became so big but also he could look at it as oh look at this guy he's disappointed that I got so big that I took him down yeah he's he's disappointed that I'm bigger than him no I think the other one is like he I think little Wayne would understand it as oh you're saying that you're so big that you took my spot and you took me away. Mm. So he's looking at it in a negative way. No, I, th- I think he, he got it as sarcasm. Oh, I let Lil Wayne down. Ooh, kind of uh, that, bullshit. That's another way of looking at it. Yeah. No, but he was, he was and he said it. Like, he's like, let me all to bump the Carter three held my rolly chain proud. Irony, I think I, my hard work let Lil Wayne down. It does sound like, yo, my hard work uh, just yeah. puts you out that, of the picture. The irony part, yeah. Yes. The irony no, part. But the, you look at it from, if you're, taking it straight as it is like i used to be so like hyped by your stuff that i looked up to you so much that i wanted to be as good as you are and i put in the hard work look at life i'm at this yeah. position now and where at, and look, look at, at the irony yeah, that's the irony my hard work put you down well, not down about the super bowl it put you down mm. let little wayne down it, was, it wasn't put you down yeah mm. let little wayne down yeah let little wayne yeah, down. so disapp- it was disappointed let you I let, I let you down as I'm, well I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you what i think little play. wayne yeah i heard that you know okay. because we heard it as yo he's saying i look up to like he said i bumped the car to three i mm. liked your album but it's funny how you said the car to three you never said the four or five but it's all good because the three is the greatest one but anyway three is, is the peak we know, we know. wasn't it right so i think little wayne just misunderstood what's going on mm. and i think that's why he called kendrick but kendrick also told y'all that i do not stay on my phone mm. I'm talking to Sally. He's doing push-ups in the park right now. He's, he's not going to hear you. <laughs> you know, in all black. <laughs> Anyways. That was fun. Man. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you, Drake, for, for giving us Amazing 45 minutes. About, so you know. Well done, sir. I, I couldn't get the chance to enjoy it. I mean, my fun is shit. We won. Yeah. Yeah. Against the provincial. Child's play. Against the provincial, med- uh, you know, medieval mythical team. Lies to them. I can't even pronounce the name of the team that you guys played against. It comes from the outer realms. I don't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, go just court. No it's, mind. it's where Thor goes for a spring. Anyways, shout out to our tens and tens and this. Shout out to tens and tens. Yay. Yay. Another podcast. Another Mumble podcast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we'll see you soon. By the way, we, all got, we got some things popping and soon you should uh, hear about it. We'll see you soon. We out? Peace. Peace. When I say that, by the way, like next year. Anyway, we out. Peace. 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 Peace.